this is our seasonal roundup. So we're going to be going through the latest release of Bebop. So this release came out about three or four weeks ago. So some of you may have already had a chance to play with some of these new features. And what we're going to do is talk through a little recap of what we did before, some other stuff, but we're going to go through the agenda in a moment anyway. So just a quick note on who we are. So I'm Lewis, senior C one of the senior CSMs here at VBOX. So that's me on the left. Um, and then I'm joined by my colleague, Kyle. I think, is this your first webinar, Kyle? This is my first, yeah, seasonal roundup. So, first so. one of these. <laughs> so a bit of a newbie to this, but hopefully it all goes, all goes okay. I'm one of the technical support team members and essentially I deal with a lot of in integrations and stuff like that. So any support requests you guys send in, I, I might be at the other end, depending who you get. <laughs> Excellent. So just going over the agenda for the day. So we're going to go over the previous release. So all the things that came out, like Noah said, three or four weeks ago, and then a in-depth look at the new update. So the one that's coming, and then we're going to have a sneak peek at the roadmap. So things to come in the future, and then a Q and A at the end. So any questions you have guys, make sure you're scanning that QR code and sending them in. So March, 2024 release. So the recap speed scoring. So this is one of, these are our headline features. So we've got speed scoring, so fastest finger first. So an example of this would be if you've had two a tie for first place at the, at the top of the leaderboard and you wanna you wanna find out who that winner was, you've got the speed scoring option there to hopefully figure out who that winner was. So that the person who answered the fastest would then be the be the winner of that leaderboard. And then you've got the previous question library. So this is a personal thing for each individual in the VBOX account. Any polls that you've made will be put into this previous question library. So if you went into another session, for example, and you wanted to use a, a poll that you'd made in a, a separate one, then you could just immediately click on it, click previous questions, and then insert it quite quickly without having to faff around making it again. Uh, dark theme is, as it says, we've got the light theme by default on Bbox. Clicking dark theme just makes everything the dark color palette rather than the light one. And then images in polls now pull through to PowerPoint. So any polls that you've made in the dashboard and you've added an image to, if you insert those into your PowerPoint deck, it will also bring the image through with it as well. That was quite a big one, if I remember. Like there was a lot of people wondering yeah. why the, the image in the dashboard wasn't being pulled into PowerPoint. Yeah, it's, so it's, it's, it's people having to faff around adding images really and really handy. The poll, a bit, and uh, yeah, it can, can be a bit of a pain, but that's all, all, all good now. And then we've got a few key changes and improvements. So this is things like making sure that when you add a poll into your PowerPoint, you know, it's, it all looks good and all the formatting's correct. And, Descriptions to polls we've now got. So, you know, when you when you click on your choice of the eight polls, it will now have a little description of what one is what. But then there's a few other little things like reordering multi-choice questions and stuff like that. Nice. And that takes us neatly on to the latest release that came out a few weeks ago. And that's the reason we're here today. I'll talk through what these features are and what's coming, and then we'll go through them in a bit more detail and I'll explain how to do some of these things as well. But we'll start with the headline features. So the, the key things here are the new and improved question type. It's kind of a new question, kind of just an improvement on the old question, but it's <clears throat> sort of taken the place of the star rating question. So previously we had the five star rating question. That's where you would essentially just choose an item to rate like the, the food at the venue, that kind of thing, and just rate it out of five stars. Now we've turned it into what we, what's called a Likert style question, which is probably something you're very familiar with in employee feedback surveys and the annual HR survey that you might get from your organization, where there's lots of different items and then it just says, strongly disagree to strongly agree. And you just go through and you use that scale for every single item on that list. So that's now available in the dashboard. Uh, images as choices in multi-choice questions is quite a cool one. Huge one. <laughs> so previously, you could do something a bit like this in the old PowerPoint add-in. There's a few videos that I've created floating around where you can change the options on the screen in PowerPoint for images. That's now been pulled through into the dashboard. So when you run a poll in the dashboard or in the PowerPoint add-in, you can add the images as choices. So all three images or all four or five, however many you add, appear, and you can make them bigger on your device, make them smaller and on the screen as well. So it makes picture polling much more possible. All of this functionality has been pulled through into the Teams app and the PowerPoint app. But crucially with the Teams add-in, you can now create your polls in the Teams add-in. So rather than just adding VBOX to your Teams session and essentially becoming a participant in your own VBOX session, you can now log into your dashboard, launch polls from the add-in, create polls from the add-in, and basically control your whole VBOX session from within Teams without having to leave and go anywhere else. And also means that you can create your polls on the fly. So if you're running a session 
and you suddenly think, oh, do you know what? I need to get a sense of how people feel. And rather than getting people to raise hands and things, I can just create a quick poll in VBox. What do you think? Bosh, off we go. The same thing is now available in the PowerPoint add-in where you can't necessarily do it on the fly during your session, but in the process of building your slide deck, rather than having to go to VBox on the dashboard, build your polls, go back to PowerPoint, and then import them all, you can kind of create them and import them as you build your slides, which is a much more sort of natural way to build your slide deck. There's some, more, some small features coming as well, like additional features, things like running multiple surveys at once, multiple quizzes, which is quite a big deal. And we have tested this, you can have up to, well, we've tested up to 50. Matt's pretty confident that, he's, that he doesn't think there is a limit, but I can't imagine why he didn't any more than 50 surveys at one time in one session. You can shuffle the survey questions for participants. So in quizzing situation, it means that you can't cheat and look over the shoulder of your colleague. Creating your own image library. So similar to the question library, you can have your own images. And there's a couple of key changes like copying the QR code and having specific settings for polls. So it means each poll has a different setting. So how do we create the poll within our Teams session? So this GIF that's on the screen here, I can't show you live in a Teams environment. We've got the, the VBOX session being added to Teams. Now you can see that it's asking me to log in. When I log in, it then pulls up the little login box, which is on my other screen I've dragged across, pop in my details, and I access my account as if I'm logging into the dashboard online. Once I'm in, I've got a few extra steps that not everybody would have to do because uh, I've got multiple different accounts here at VBOX. It then asks me to select which session I want to use. So I select the session that I've created for this Teams meeting. And then I've got all my polls already created on the side and then I can create a new one. So hit create new, select the kind of poll I want. And the functionality is exactly the same as building it in the dashboard. I can add my choices. I could add images. I can use custom poll settings and I can add in timers or do real time responses and change the timer. But as soon as I'm, as soon as I'm happy and I've created it, I can then press create. It's at the bottom of my list and I can just open the poll in that team session there and then. And then Kyle, who was helping me record the GIF, then responds to the poll, the result comes in and then I can close the poll. So it's very easy, very simple. And if you're used to using VBox in the dashboard, it's exactly the same process. And then it's very similar again for using the Teams add-in. So with Teams, if you haven't got the Teams add-in installed already, uh, sorry, with PowerPoint, <laughs> yeah, thank you, Carl. Click on the add-ins button and then search for VBOX and install it. And then it appears in your ribbon at the top and it says insert poll. You click insert poll and you have to do the login process as you saw when I was logging into Teams, but then you have exactly the same functionality where you can see your list of polls in your session or your list of sessions, select the session you want to join and then add in your poll there as well. So the process is exactly the same and you can just do it all as you build the rest of your slides. So that leads us on to the next section, which is that promised quiz. So let's jump back across to present view. Let's uh, show the Q&A, see if we have any questions Excellent. in before we jump into the quiz. I love poll creation in Teams and PowerPoint. The Teams added for VBOX doesn't work with uh, Teams town halls or Teams live event at the moment. It's not our choice. It's just based on how Microsoft want to run those kind of platforms. As soon mm -hmm. as it's available, then we'll develop the tool to make sure it works in there as well. So Rahul, can multiple sessions easy with polls be run at the same time? Yes, you can have as many different sessions in your account as you like. And then each session has many different polls as you like, but you can't necessarily one person individually go into five different sessions and open five different sets of polls live in real time. I'm not necessarily sure why you'd, why you'd need to do it. And Rahul, if you wanted to email us at support at vbox.com, we can definitely dig into that a little bit more and try and understand a little bit more about what you would require. But ultimately it is possible. There's just a bit of a workaround that we'd have to, to go through with you. Cool, so let's just jump on with the quiz. So over to you, Kyle. Excellent. So as you can see, the countdown time has started and we are close the poll. So Let's see what the correct answer was. Excellent stuff. Looks like most people got it right. That's correct. Yeah, rating scale is the name of the new question type coming in or now. <laughs> Released three weeks ago, should I say? Yeah, it's gone so quickly. Well, it's Kate B. Get it in 3.7 seconds. <laughs> yes, well done. Excellent. So moving, moving on to the next one. Can multiple surveys now be opened at once? So what was the answer? 
Yes, it is in fact a yes for that one. You can now have multiple surveys open at the same time. 1.9 seconds as well, George. Very good, like Very good George. Listening. <laughs> Excellent. The LSV box related one, this one. But it does show off the uh, pitch polling quite nicely. So who scored first in the England game last night? Excellent, 40 people have answered. Ooh, a good, good, good divide here. So the correct answer actually was uh, Holland scored first, or Benevolence scored first to go one nil up right at the start of the game. Which, Xavi uh, Simmons with an absolute worldie. It was a great, great goal from outside the box, right <laughs> into the corner, which obviously we weren't too happy about where we lost, but uh, no, we, we recovered. <laughs> Excellent stuff. Last, is this is the last one. This is the last, last question. One Can some settings for polls now be changed individually? So yes or no. But, so it looks like maybe one person went for no. So the correct answer is yes. You can now do those poll specific settings that we will go through a bit later on. Um, yes, you can change the settings for individual polls. Cool. Excellent stuff. So we display the leaderboard to see who's come first. So it looks like Martin King has come first. Well done, Martin King. Well done, um, Martin. You got came first uh, with the uh, fastest finger first, it looks like. So there's an example of the speed scoring coming in handy because we've got quite a few people who uh, we seem to have had a little bit of a tie at the top. Yeah. Uh, but Martin was the fastest. So it wasn't well, the Martin. most difficult quiz in the world. No, no, you could have made it a bit harder, a bit of algebra in there. <laughs> but yeah, well done, Martin. Got in 12 seconds, then AR. Um, I'm guessing that's Abby, R. Abby Runcy. Um, got it in 17, and then we've got Colin in 29 seconds. So well done to everybody who got that right. Um, that leads us nicely on to showing you how to build some of these features. You've already seen how some of these features work. Let's show you how to build one. So when we create new, we choose a multiple choice, and we want to create one of these picture polls. So let's just say, who is King, for example. I'm only using this because I've got these images in my library already. So it's showing you off your personal library as well. So I put my choices in and, and then I can insert my images. So I could insert the image as a whole question. So I could say, who is this? And then have a picture of Harry Kane and then some options with different names, but I'm going to insert a specific image. So I can say image number one, uh, image number two, and then image number three, and I'll actually choose Harry Kane and tick that as the correct answer. So you saw with my personal image library, if I wanted to change this image to something else, I can, I'll press the pencil. These are images that I've uploaded to my account already. I can remove them. So if I don't want this racing flag, for example, in my library, I can remove it and it's gone forever. And it just means I've, if I'm using the same images regularly, rather than uploading that image from my dashboard every time or you know, if I'm doing a demo showing people my, my files, which you shouldn't be doing, um, I can just use this image here. I can still use the image library. So I've got my image library here, which is just our library, sorry, from Unsplash. And I can also still upload my own images as well. Now I can add in my correct answer explanation. And crucially, I can also use custom settings for this poll. So let's have a look at the default settings. So here, the default settings are actually what I would like. Now I could alternatively change it to display the results in real time or have the results not appear at all when the result, when the poll is closed, I can change the countdown timer, I can change the time, etc. But when I'm happy, I can press create. Now, before I go in and run that poll, I'm also going to create a rating scale question. So under rating scale, as mentioned, you still have the star rating question available should you want to use the old question type. However, we've now got this new version. So I'm going to put in a question here, rate these items, and you can adjust your scale of what you want it to be. So let's say awful, brilliant. And then you can put your items to rate. So let's say we're doing this as reviewing a, a venue where we were doing a conference. So let's say the food is always the most important. The speakers and the food, isn't it? Air con. <laughs> thinking with the aircon, I'm thinking of my colleagues in the States at the moment at an education conference where it is like 42 degrees, uh, even at 11 p.m. at night, which just sounds awful. Constantly too hot, <laughs> I think. But then I can go in and I can use custom settings. So I don't need to worry about having a countdown timer or music or anything. And I want, let's say I want to show the results in real time. Press create and there is our poll that's been created. So I'm going to jump back in and show you how to do them. I can see there's a few questions as well, and I'll go through and answer those once I've shown you these couple of features. So let's jump back into full screen, and I'll, I will come to those questions. Close the poll here. 
Excuse me, correct sorry. answer was, was Harry Kane. Uh, so that's how the, the picture poll would work with the images as choices. And then we'll move on to the rating question. So now you can see it's just a slider on your device and you can decide what you think the, the score should be. So, you know, we went to the shed for lunch. Let's put that as a five. And then the speakers, we've been awful. He's had a cough um, but the, and the aircon's broken. So we'll uh, I'll mark mine pretty low. And we'll send those in. Now, once, the, once they've been sent in, um, you can then stop the poll. When I stop the poll, you can then compare your personal answers to that of the group. So on the screen here, I've got everybody as a group on average, but then there's a little toggle on your device that says, show me my responses. So you can see how your response personally differs to the result of the group as a whole, which I think is quite interesting. So those are the two new sort of question types. Next thing we need to do is look at surveys. But before we do that, we'll have a quick look at the speakers. And Melissa, can you show us how to reduce the volume in a poll as demonstrated that it was too loud during your poll? Music's too loud for the quiz. Can't hear you that well. That's a really good point. I don't know if that's possible. I not, will... not through VVox, it's not. But I mean, what you, what you could probably do is reduce the volume of Chrome as a whole or the web browser as a whole. Potentially. Which should, uh, should um, work. Um, I will feed that back, though. It's a good, good point. I'll send it across the feedback. And if there's anything, Melissa, that we can do to give you some advice on how to do that, we'll find out and we'll make sure we send it to you after this session. I'm just going to hide those questions. Um, Megan, can the alt text on images be set in the image library and does it stay in place when added to questions? I believe it does. Once it's been added to your library, that alt text remains and it will retain that alt text when you add it to a poll, when, it, when you add it to another question. Um, yeah. The alt text can be whatever you want, but there is a certain character limit of how long that alt text can be. I think of it as like a sort of previously used images, isn't it? So yeah. that image that you used, however you had it set, will be then what is saved. We've had a, had a couple, more question, couple more questions about the, uh, about the music. <laughs> Good point, well made. We couldn't hear the music here at our end, which is very interesting. I'm not quite sure why. So we'll hide that one as well. That's the way things go, um, unfortunately, isn't it? It all works in the test and then... Uh... <laughs> but yeah, we've, we'll definitely pass on the feedback about the, uh, the noise of the poll and if there's anything mm. we can do to change that. Ah, Anne Roberts, oh, not, Roberts. not Abby Ronsi. I was, uh, I was <laughs> wrong. Thanks, Anne. Uh, and then there's Abby at VBOX at the bottom there. Cool. So. What I'm going to show you now is around surveys. So previously under surveys in VBOX, you could only have one survey open at a time. And as I mentioned, you can have multiple surveys now. So if I open the participant app, you should all see when I start the survey that that survey, clip, the clipboard has now got a little dot above it and there's a survey to respond to. I can now go in and import a second survey. So let's just grab a random one from our import. And I'm going to start that survey as well. You can see that there's now two surveys to respond to. It's still really nice and simple. You go into your first survey. Once you've submitted your answers, you can then press the back button. And um, I haven't submitted anything, so it will just let me know that they'll be discarded. And then I can go into the event feedback survey too um, and fill out those as well. As I mentioned, you can also shuffle the responses to your survey. So let's go into event feedback survey two and shuffle the shuffle the question order. So at the moment, the first question is, please specify the main reason for attending the conference. And if I shuffle the order, it lets me know that it's going to shuffle for everybody and everybody will be affected. But now if I go into the feedback survey two, I've got first question, please rate the registration process. And it doesn't shuffle it to the same order every time. So if I then unshuffle and shuffle again, the first question is now, what other topics or themes are of interest to you for a conference? So. This particular feature is going to be, I think, pretty useful for from education standpoint when you're running tests at the end of your modules and things, but also very helpful for staff training at LND to make sure that you know people aren't memorizing the order of the results that they should be entering and then telling their colleague, which isn't obviously in the spirit of staff training. Excellent. Yeah, so just making sure that you're filling out the, uh, the first <coughs> one there, guys, the VBOX the feedback survey, if you yes. could. Big, big help for us. I'm going to stop survey two, but I am going to leave the feedback survey open, as Carl mentioned. This survey is about this particular session, what you like, what you didn't like, and ways that we can make the session better for you as well. And there's also a mention about trust pilots. We do rely on our reviews quite heavily here at VBOX. It would be amazing if you could leave us a little review. So if you are mm. interested and willing, please do pop your email in and we'll send you a specific link. It's super simple. Once you get the link, you just click it, put your, your five stars in and give us a little comment and that's yeah. it. So that takes on to the, the last part of the new features, which is around the QR code, which is probably my 
personal favorite, which is why I've left it to the end. Very handy. <laughs> Previously, if you wanted to copy the QR code, we probably would have told you um, through support or if you came to one of us directly that you had to you click, click on it and make it bigger and use your window snipping tool and things. Now it's really simple. You just click invite participants, right click, copy image and paste that image wherever you want. You can still copy all of the text should you want to, and then you can edit the text once you paste it into an email or something, but it's really simple to just copy that. Let's quickly jump onto questions before we look at the brain. Shall we? Yeah, so what we got up here, we got do quest the questions shuffle to the same order for everyone. No, so it's random each person. So it, it will help people, you know, not copy each other if they're trying to look over uh, uh, each other's answers, I guess. Yeah, yeah, it is random for everybody. So, um, and each time you do it, it won't be the same for that person every time. If they're doing the same thing, it will it shuffle them randomly every single time. Um, excellent. Cheers. We have the UK centric question about yeah. the summer. <laughs> Um, I noticed you and you shuffled, it didn't appear to change the order of any of our questions. Is there a delay? Um, interesting. It should have. It, we did have two surveys open, so that, that might have been that might have been it. Obviously, we didn't shuffle the, the feedback survey. So it might have just been that we were we were shuffling the wrong one for you to see, or maybe maybe you need to do a little refresh, but it should it should be fairly automatic, to the best of my knowledge. Absolutely, Absolutely, Melissa. Nice one from Linda. Is this all on your website? Yes, it is all on the website. We've got we had the release blog that's available on our website to go and look at, as well as our newsletter. Um, we've got videos on how to do all of this stuff going up to our help site as we speak. So I've just recorded the video to create the poll in Teams and in PowerPoint. So those should be uploaded very shortly. So if you have missed any of this, all those are going to be available on the help site and the website. Uh, and then to answer Kirsten's question. This link will get sent out following the webinar. So if you have missed the first few minutes, you'll be able to get that as well. And then Stephanie had a nice question. Does the custom settings work in a PowerPoint plugin? Yes, it does. The functionality is the same across the board. So if you're using the PowerPoint add-in to create your polls or using the Teams add-in or the dashboard, it, the functionality is now the same. So I think that's all the questions as such. Looks like it, yeah. So let's jump back to our slides. Perfect. Just before I let Kyle loose on the roadmap, I need to remind everybody that this isn't set in stone. It's not guaranteed that these features are going to come out when we plan for them to come out. They're being designed and investigated and spec'd out as you speak, but with no fixed release date, they could move and they could come out later than expected. You know, if Microsoft decided they wanted to change how Teams worked again, we'd have to potentially delay some of our development to fix the, the Teams issues that might arise from Microsoft. But all being well, touch wood, all of these things should be coming out as planned. Excellent. So roadmap and development. So sort of towards the end of this year, there are some things that we're, we're looking to get involved in putting into our app. So participant Q&A labels, this is going to be ultra handy because obviously if you've used the Q&A before, you'll know that you can add labels, but they have to be done in the back end of it. What adding participant Q&A labels essentially means is that when participants send questions to the Q&A, they will be able to label them themselves. So you won't have to do anything in the back end and it's ultra handy for sort of organizing those questions as they come into the Q&A. It's got any ambiguity as well. So if, you, mm. if you're the, the moderator in the back end of the session and you've received the question, it stops the moderator having to kind of guess or try and work out who's the best person to answer that question mm. by making it available for the participant to assign that label themselves. It just makes life easier for the moderator, for the post of the day, the, the, the speaker, etc. I mean, it just makes a much more flowing Q&A session. I yeah, it's a good example, isn't it? If, if you say you had a question for Lewis today and you, you wanted to direct it at him, you could, before you send your message or after you just pin that label for Lewis onto that question as you send it in, and then we'll know that it's for Lewis. But then that, that leads nicely onto the Q&A downvote. So obviously you can like the questions like you guys have been doing today in the Q&A. Q&A downvotes is essentially the exact opposite of that. So questions with downvotes will move down the pecking order on the most liked, if that's how you've got it organized by for the Q&A. Um, so essentially one with five likes, one with five dislikes would just cancel each other out. But it's hopefully a good one that we'll, we'll be seeing soon. It's been quite heavily requested. It has, yes. It yeah. helps probably paint a, a bigger, more accurate picture of how people feel about various different topics because you can also downvote stuff rather than just having likes. Mm, yeah, it reminds me a bit of Twitter when you used to be able to <laughs> downvote people's <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> excellent stuff. So yeah, next one is poll result display alternative. So this is quite a big one as well. 
we, we want to be able to in the future, hopefully with the next few updates, have rather than just the graphs, the bar graphs that we have now, adding pie charts and number clouds and you know different types of charts that you guys will be able to pick from. Makes a nice graphic and I love a good pie chart. It's ever since school, <laughs> it's always been my favorite. Yeah. But yeah, and larger limits for numeric poles. So this is just allowing for a larger number in the numeric poles, really. Yeah, the current limit is 10,000 numbers. Yes. So it's just yeah. making it easier to have some of those numeric poles with much larger limits. Yeah. So before and after pole comparisons. So if you had a workout at the start and you wanted to compare it to, you know, a workout at the end, say you had a session, you were asking how, how confident people are on a topic at the start and, you know, they're, all, they're not very confident. At the end, you do another word cloud after you've done your session. How confident are you now? People are, you know, raving about it. They know how to do it. Now you can compare those two and sort of just say, look, look how confident you are now that you've learned about it. Just, just one example, obviously, off the top of my head, but it would be really handy for education and for so learning good. and development. So good, yes. And then demographic comparison, so segmentation, analyzing two poles against each other is a bit like what we used to have in the PowerPoint, wasn't it? But it's sort of, yeah, you'll be able to you know, split your audience and see how group A vote versus group B or different regions in the country and things like that and get, but again, a better understanding of what's happening in your audience. Perfect. So then, yeah, moving on to sort of next year, some sort of loose, loose examples of what we're going to be adding, hopefully a mix and match. So linking two, two different things together. So like dog with bone, and then, you know, you might have fish up here and cat down here and linking those two together. That's the, the best example I can think of the top of my head, but yeah. and then and some more attendance on participating tracking improvements as well. Yeah, so that, that's it for the roadmap. Please don't forget, we have that survey live in the dashboard and in, in the app. Please do go and respond to it. It's how we can make these sessions better. We can improve how we deliver the content and all that kind of stuff. So please do go and fill it out. It really helps us out. Just before we jump into questions and if there's any more on the board, just as a reminder, please do check out our YouTube channel. If you're not already subscribed, please do subscribe to that. Um, likewise, with LinkedIn, it's where you'll see all of our posts about new things that are happening within VVox. And uh, go and have a look at our new uh, social media channels, so like TikTok, uh, and I think we've got an Instagram channel as well. You'll see Kyle featured heavily on the TikTok <laughs> when he's gone out into the wild and interviewed students and lecturers <laughs> um, to see, how, see what they think about, uh, about VVox. So do check out those channels. and. Uh, keep abreast of everything that's going on with VBOX. Uh, so let's jump in to questions. Can you toggle the dislike button on and off? Um, I don't know. It's still being scoped out. Uh, if you think that is would be necessary, I think it'd be a cool idea. That's mm -hmm. great. We can feed that back. It's still being built. I have I've seen a couple of little examples of what it might look like. So, you know, we can definitely feed that back to the team if you think that would be a good idea. Uh, mix and match questions would be good for Duolingo style vocabulary test. Yeah, that's quite a good example of a case, use case. Yeah. I like that. Are you able to set a timer for surveys that function as a test when it can't be done live? Um, I don't think so uh, as it stands. I don't think that is possible. Um, again, if you think that might be really useful, Stephanie, we can send it across the feedback for you. Oh, so this is some good use case. You have a yeah, test and you only want to give them 10 minutes to do it. We then, can send it yeah. to feedback and the more that we get these kind of bits of feedback and the more we get requests for the same sort of thing, and we can then kind of bump that up the order of development, essentially. So everything that happens in VBOX is all user-led development. So if it's things that you need and you want, let us know, and we can add that to the to the huge, enormous list of things that we want to develop. The roadmap isn't posted online, purely because we it's not necessarily set in stone. These are just rough plans and things that we've got in the work. So we thought we'd share a little bit of what's coming on this call but it's not posted online. I mean, it will it will be on this webinar with this good, that goes on to our YouTube channel, but we won't necessarily see it online itself. So we're looking for people, looking for options for external people to take tests before hire and can't access our internal system. Ah, I'm assuming that's a follow-up to setting that, that set timer. Okay, um, thanks, Stephanie. I'll hide that for now, but it's good to have it in the, in the, in the data report as well. Um, is there a forum for suggesting future development? Um, Trish, the best thing to do is email support at vbox.com or email your customer success representative. So that would be myself or, or the other Lewis or Charlie or Fraser, if you're in education or Brogan, email one of them. Um, they'll be able to gather all that information and pass it directly across to the, the, t the, the product team via the internal feedback channels that we have. So yeah, contact one of the, your CS team would be the best option. How to enlarge to useful size can it be oriented horizontally? Um, Heidi, the image itself is the size of the image is purely dictated by the image that you have on file. 
So if your image on file is particularly small, then it would appear quite small mm -hmm. in the list here. So the bigger the resolution of the image, the larger it's going to appear on the VBOX display. Likewise, um, if your image is a horizontal image, it will remain a horizontal image. If your image is a portrait mm -hmm. image, it will remain a portrait image. Yeah, so I think change it before you save it to your computer. Or, yes. You know, and, so, then, and then upload it horizontal rather than edit just using the Microsoft photo yeah. editor tool first yeah. and then it would work in the dashboard. Emily, can you link directly to a survey? Yes, you can. I forgot to show this actually. So we have this option here. So let's say we want to get people to go into this feedback survey. Back like Previously, you'd have to direct somebody to, to go to VBOX and then click on the survey tab or even maybe copy this link and send it to them directly where it says M dash the session ID and then dash survey. Now, if you want to send somebody to a specific survey, you can click on the three dot icon and click copy direct app link. That then creates a link which takes them directly into that survey. It bypasses the little list of surveys. So if you had multiple surveys in there, it would bypass the list and take them directly into the survey you want them to fill out. Um, ha another handy little thing that I actually forgot to mention. So thank you very much for bringing that to my attention. Emily, amazing. Thank you. Let's hide that one as well. Um, another question from Heidi. Orientation meanings portrait, uh, spread portrait images of more things horizontally across the screen. Yeah, Heidi, you would you would need to take that image, as Carl mentioned, that's on your machine, open the, if you're using a Mac, like photo editor on Mac, or if you're using a, a Microsoft machine, the pictures editor, um, and then change the orientation of the picture there, save it, and then upload it to VBOX and you'll be able to use it the right way around. Um, I hope that answers that question. Um, but that seems to be it for the questions that we have here. Um, we've got five more minutes, but are there any other questions from anybody before we wrap up? Oh, other options for grading schemes. So uh, yes, there is, um, but it works with our LMS system. Heidi, I think the best thing to do would be to contact your CS representative for your school or university. They can explain a little bit more how the LMS system works and how Gradebook works and things like that. But there is some functionality there. I'm, I don't work in the education side myself, so I, I'm not the best person to answer the question. If you speak to your CS rep, they'll be able to explain in much more detail than I can. Heidi, yes, yes, you can with the grading. But um, like, like, like Lewis said, yeah, speak to, speak to your CS rep and we can uh, help you out. Alternatively, support, we can give you a hand there as well. Um, Points of position are correct, not possible through LMS. So, <coughs> yes, you can obviously give a point for a correct answer from VBOX. You have to link it, obviously, with your um, with your signing details of your schools uh, with your school data data provider. But um, yeah, but we don't. You can't give minus points. Um, yeah, and you can't give extra points. Like it's ten yeah. points for this question, five points for this one. It is just one point, point for each for each correct points, answer. Yeah. Perfect. Cool. All that's left to say is thank you very much for joining. Thanks for coming along, spending some time with your afternoon with us. I really appreciate the, the, the large number of people that we got. So, yeah, thank you very much. And uh, we'll see you all soon. Yeah, see you later, guys. Have a, have a good rest of your afternoon. You take care. Bye-bye.